The American Academy of Pediatrics policy on male genital cutting is culturally biased and seriously flawed. It should be withdrawn. It fails to consider the structure or functions of the foreskin, a normal, healthy body part, only the cutting of it off. It does not, for example, cite Taylor's groundbreaking 1996 paper, The Prefuse, Specialized Mucosa of the Penis and Its Loss to Circumcision. The erogenous value of the foreskin has been known for millennia, even to its enemies. Recent denial of that value is confined to those who have no experience of it. It bases its conclusions about sexuality on two physiological studies that did not consider the foreskin, and on surveys of African adult volunteers for circumcision in the context of HIV prevention. It treats normal intact penile features as pathological. Late separation of the prefuse from the glands can take as long as 17 years, but the AAP says it should separate within two months. And it associates prepucial wetness with disease when it is normal, just like vaginal wetness. It is filled with confirmation bias, finding the results the authors want. It claims benefits of circumcising outweigh the risks without ever numerically comparing them. It exaggerates benefits and minimizes risks and harm. For example, it cites a study showing that circumcision ablates, that is, removes the most sensitive part of the penis, and it ignores that finding. It admits the African HIV findings may be inapplicable to the USA, but it goes ahead and applies them anyway. It cites a study suggesting circumcising men increases the HIV risk to women, and it ignores that finding. It cites a study showing that a narrow foreskin, phimosis, not a normal one, is the issue in penile cancer, and it ignores that finding. It dismisses major complications and death from circumcision because it did not find any statistical studies of them. It discusses the action of the Mogan circumcision clamp without mentioning that the clamp has caused too much of several boys' penises to be cut off, and lawsuits have driven the company out of business. It repeats the common claim that it is safer to circumcise babies than adults, but it offers no evidence for that claim. Its discussion of the ethical question of removing genital tissue from a non-consenting person versus leaving it for him to decide assigns no value to his autonomy or his human right to bodily integrity. It compares the costs of doing it early versus late, but not the benefits of not doing it at all. Its ethical consultant, Dr. Douglas Dekimer, has said elsewhere that circumcision is not necessary and has a risk of harm, and that, quoting the AAP's own bioethics policy, a parental wish is not sufficient to justify doing any surgery and it ignores that. The AAP withdrew its female genital cutting policy after a storm of outrage two years ago when it proposed allowing a token ritual nick to baby girls much less extensive than neonatal male genital cutting. Since that was unacceptable, how can this be acceptable? The public mood is turning against infant circumcision. The intactivism movement has found a receptive audience especially among young people through social media. The AAP's policy seems bent not on considering the healthy intact penis at all, but on restoring insurance and public funding to circumcision in order to find a new market among the poor. It does a disservice to the growing number of boy babies being left intact and their parents, and an even greater disservice to the boys who will be circumcised as a result of its strident advocacy and to the men they become.